When he came to himself, he became contrited. But go to the next verse after that. What did he do? He went back to his own ways. The same thing Ahab did here. Now, the question is, did God punish Ahab? God still punished Ahab, you know? Did God punish Jezebel? Of course, God punished Jezebel. Second Kings, Second Kings chapter 9. Second Kings chapter 9. I want to read from verse 22. And it came to pass when Joram saw Jehu, that he said, is it peace, Jehu? And he answered, what peace? So long as the wardens of thy mother, Jezebel, and her witchcrafts are so many. And Joram turned his hands and fled and said to Ahaziah, they stretch you over Ahaziah. And Jehu drew a bow, a bow with full strength, a small jota between his arms. Who was jo 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 Jehoram? The son of who? And the son of what? Ahab. <laughs> so, and Jehu drew a bow, a bow with full strength and smote Jehoram, Jehoram between his arm, and the arrow went out at his heart, and he sunk down in his chariot. Then said Jehu to Bidka, his captain, take up and cast him in the portion of the field of Naboth. Are you following? The Nazareth. Because he said, where you remember the pro pronouncement of God? Uh -huh. For remember how that when I and thou rode together after I have his father, the Lord laid his burden upon him. This body upon surely I have seen yesterday the blood of Naboth and the blood of his son, which said the Lord, and I will require thee in this place that said the Lord. Now, therefore, take and cast him into the in the plat of plat ground according to the word of what. Praise the Lord. Now, here we see the punishment that came. He killed him. Uh, but, but when Isaiah, the king of Judah, saw this, he fled before the way of the garden. Now, uh, uh, going further, if you look at, if you read further, you discover that even Jezebel, she's not dying. You know, the Jehu commanded her, she be thrown from the lattice, from the window, and she fell down, busted into, into pieces. And eventually, she died, and the dog world ate her. Now, what I want you to understand, what I want to know is this, that albeit um, the Jehab here, he, he, he showed remorse, he showed contrition. God said, I'm going to delay his judgment. I'm not going to leave it, but I'm going to delay his judgment. It's, but all the same, is he going to be judged? He was judged. God still required the blood of Naboth at what? At his hand. The question is, why is it that God was saying, even in the days of his sons, he's going to punish them because his sons never repented. Did you see that even his Je Jehoram, his son, did he repent there? They didn't repent because they, are, they learned the way of their father. But you need to understand something. God is a merciful God. God will exalt mercy above judgment. If, you need to, if anybody commits sin and is in error and he acknowledges his way, he asked for forgiveness. He said he will forgive. He said he that forsake his sin, confess and forsake his sin, what will God do? He will, he will obtain mercy. But he that covered his sin, what will God do to him? Shall not what? Prosper. So one thing we need to understand is that once we ask God for forgiveness from the heart, no matter the degree of sin we have committed, God will forgive. But at times, man will mount repentance, but the heart is not repented. Just like uh, um, Saul, the first king of Israel. Oh, I've done evil. I'm sorry. What I've done, but all the same, honor me before the people. Honor me before the people. Is that true? Genuine repentance? Now, God said, I'm going to delay his judgment. But I'll still bring the judgment to pass. And God brought the judgment to pass. After Ahab died, Ahab, after Ahab died, he was killed. Eventually, we're told that God brought the judgment upon all his house. Jezebel too uh, suffered it. Now, you may be asking me, does it mean if my father commits sin, 
did evil, maybe commit murder, or you do human sacrifice, God is going to punish you for it. God will punish you for it if you continue in the way of your father. But if you say, I know I am the son of Ahab. Ahab has done wrong, but I know what God demands of me. I repent of my way. God will forgive and will not count hold the iniquity of your father against you. Are we all right? Are we all right? Uh -huh. God will not hold the iniquity of your father against what? Against you. Ezekiel chapter 3. Ezekiel chapter 3. I'm reading from verse 16. And it came to pass at the end of seven days that the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, I have made thee a watchman unto the house of Israel. Therefore, hear the word at my mouth and give them warning from me. When I say unto the wicked, Thou shalt surely die like Ahab, and thou givest him warning, not, not givest him not warning, nor speaker to him, the, the wicked, to warn the wicked from his wicked way, to save his life. The same wicked man shall die in his iniquity, but his blood will not require at your hand. Yet, he thou warn the wicked, and he turn not from his wickedness, nor from his wicked way, he shall die in his iniquity. But thou hast delivered thy soul again. When a righteous man doth turn from his righteousness and commit iniquity like David, like Solomon, and I lay a stumbling block before him, he shall die, because thou hast not given him warning. He shall die in his sin, and his righteousness, which he had done, shall not be remembered, but his blood will not require the hand, nevertheless. He thou warn the righteous man, that the righteous man see not, and he does not sin, he shall surely live, because he is one. Also thou hast what? Deliver thy soul. Deliver thy soul. Here we see God was saying that if anybody commits sin, anybody goes against his commandment, and God sends a prophet like Elijah, to, call, to tell him, this is what you have done, and this is the consequence. And that person genuinely repents and come away from his sin. God said, I will forgive and I will forget. Genuinely. But if he refuses, he said, that man, that person, he will die in his what? In his iniquity, in his sin. And I and you see his blood will be required at his hand. Now, but if I tell him the righteous man who has been righteous on his all his life, he goes into sin, and I send a warning to him, and he does not heed. He said that man will die in his present state in his unrighteousness, and I will not remember. His past righteousness, I will deal with him on the basis of the point, at the point he was spiritually when death met him. And I'm going to judge him on it. Now, look at the case of Ahab. God said, I am going to judge you. And he showed contrition. God said, because he has shown contrition, I'm a God of mercy, I'm going to suspend his judgment. Because I know, his, I know his family. They are only given to idolatry. I would have thought that if truly Ahab was contrited because of the judgment that came upon him, what would he have done? What would he, have done? he would have called a national meeting, isn't it? And say, we are no more serving idols. Did he do that? Even when God gave him victory, did he, did he acknowledge the sovereignty of God? No, he still continued. When God said to him and delayed his judgment, he went back to his idolatry. Is that true repentance? You see, when somebody is in the church and you say, God, the message comes. It's a message of warning. 
It's a method of correction. And the Lord showed that person his or her life. And in the church, he's asking God for forgiveness. Oh, Lord, have mercy upon me. Uh, deliver me. And then you leave church. The next week, you still go and go to the place of your sin. You continue your sin. Is that genuine repentance? Or be it when you were asking God for forgiveness, you were saying, God, have mercy upon me. Don't say, okay, I've had. But your action after that will determine whether the words you spoke are true or whether they are from your heart. I pray the Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. So God will not visit the sin of the parent on the children, provided the children do not follow in the wickedness of the parents. Are you with me? Provided they do not follow in the wickedness of who? Of their parents. God will have mercy on them. And God will help us in Jesus' name. Today, we have looked at the covetousness of Ahab and what came upon him. It's good that we look closely at what transpired between Ahab and Naboth. We notice that Ahab came, look at 1 Kings chapter 21, verses 1 and 2. He says, and it came to pass after these things that Naboth the Jezreelite had a vineyard, which was in Jezreel, uh, had by the palace of Ahab, king of Samaria. And Ahab said, spake unto Naboth, saying, give me thy vineyard, that I may have it for a garden of herbs, because it is dear unto my house. And I will give it thee for I will give thee for it a better vineyard than it than it. Or if it seem good to thee, I will give thee the worth of it in money. Ordinarily, you will have thought, Naboth, the king is asking, why not give it to him? It doesn't it doesn't really matter, and he's going to give you something better anyway. But if Naboth had done this. Nabal will be contravening the law and the commandment of God. Look at Leviticus chapter 25. Leviticus chapter 25. I want to read verse 23. It says in verse 20, and in all, verse 23, the land shall not be sold forever. For the land is mine, for ye are stranger, and what? Sojourners wait me. The Lord specifically gave showed the children of Israel. He said they must not sell the land that they are giving them for possession. Dan must not sell their land to Issachar. Neither must Ephraim sell their land to Judah. Any portion of their land. Look at Numbers 36. Numbers chapter 36. I want to read verse 7. Numbers 36, verse 7. He says, So shall not the inheritance of the children of Israel remove from shrine toward. For every one of the children of Israel shall keep himself to the inheritance of the tribe of his word, of his father. Now, do you think Ahab does not know this? Ahab was aware of it because one of the requirements to become a king in Israel is that when you become a king, they will copy all the law for you so that you can be reading and the priest every day. He was aware, but his covetousness, his pride, will not allow him to obey the commandment and the word of the Lord. He wanted to, he was not of the tribe of Jezreel. And he wanted to, and so in refusing, Naboth was obeying God. In asking, Ahab was being disobedient to the commandment of God. Look at Ezekiel chapter 46. Ezekiel chapter 46 I want to read verse 18. Ezekiel 46, verse 18. Moreover, 
The prince shall not take of the people's inheritance by oppression to thrust them out of their possession, but he shall give his son's inheritance out of his own possession that my people will not scatter every man from his possession. Do you see that? Hundreds of years, thousands of years after Ahab had gone, after Nabal had gone, God was still insisting on the commandment that he gave unto the children of Israel. But what do we notice? So uh, Nabal said, I am going to obey God. The fear of man will not make me disobey God. What a lesson for you and I today. Brethren, who have an inheritance from God, you have an inheritance of eternal life. You are saved, you are born again, you are a believer. What is the world offering you in exchange for your inheritance? And God said, we must not give our inheritance, no matter who the person is, whether a prince or a king, whatever the po po uh, uh, position in the world, whatever they are offering us, we must not give what? Our inheritance to them. And I pray that we will not give our inheritance. They will not, we will not give to the devil. We will not give to man. We will not give to a woman in Jesus' name. Now, if you notice it, Naboth was standing on the law. But even Jezebel was devious. She used the law contrary. The Bible says, Thou shalt not take a judgment against thy neighbor, but in the mouth of, of, of a two or three witnesses shalt thou take judgment against thy neighbor. Jezebel knew this. And Jezebel knew that if only one person come and accuse Naboth, some people in Israel who knew the Lord God said, this is not what God commanded. She decided to twist the law, to use the law against an innocent man. She chose Bezal, Be, sons of Belair. You know what it means to be son of Belair? Somebody next to nothing. A worthless person. People who you can buy their conscience by a, with a penny. Worthless people. He chose them, two people, so that the people, he can, in the guise of the law, she can disguise her covetous and the covenant of her and her wickedness in the law of God. She chose two people and said, she planning, and said, get two people who will witness against him. And then they take two percent. Number one, she plotted it. She scorned the law of restraint that God said in restraint. Them. Look at First Kings chapter twenty-one, where we read verses five to seven. First Kings twenty-one, five to seven. Look at what he says there. But Jezebel is what came to him and said unto him, Why is thy spirit so dark, so sad? That thou eatest no bread. And he said unto her, Because I spake unto the neighbor, the Jezreelite, and said to him, Give me thy vineyard for money, or else, if it please thee, I will give thee another vineyard for it. And he answered, I will not give it thee. And Jezebel, his wife, said unto him, Does thou now govern the kingdom of Israel? Arise and eat bread and let thy heart be merry. I will give you the vineyard of Naboth. Don't worry. You know, he shared her husband with her words. He said, what, 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 what are you talking about? A whole king. You have all the power and the authority. Go and sit down. If you can't do it, I'll do it for you. You see, the words we speak can either heal or destroy. The, the words we hear can either heal or hurt. The word we speak can either build up or destroy. What words do you speak to, to your husband? Do you, the words you speak to your husband, does it steer him to do that which is right? The words you speak to your wife, does it steer her to do that which what is right? The words we speak to our children. Are they hurting words or healing words? Does it steer them up to want to live for God or does it want to make them? I don't want to have anything to do with Christianity. I pray that 
our word will build people up. Amen. Our word will encourage people to do that which right in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. Jezebel instigated her husband to wickedness. She was the chief instigator of wickedness. Look at 1 Kings chapter 16. 1 Kings chapter 16, verse 31. He said, and it came to pass, as if it had been a light for him to walk in the sins of Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, that he took to wife Jezebel, the daughter of Edbaal, king of the Zidonians, and went and served Baal, and worshipped what? Him. Chapter 18, verse 13. Chapter 18, verse 13. Was he not told, my Lord, what I did when Jezebel slew the prophets of the Lord? How I hid a hundred men of the Lord's prophet by fifty in a cave and fed them with bread and what? Jezebel slew the servants of the Lord. Do you know? Do you see here that this woman, she was an epitome of evil. She was the description of evil. In fact, it was even she was so evil that when evil came to Revelation, the Bible referred to her, uh, referred to the that he said that her Lord Jezebel. She was notorious, and she's even notorious in eternity. She will be notorious in eternity. All we do today, they will become history tomorrow. All we say, our act and our actions today, will become history tomorrow. It is the story that will be told to generation to come. What story will they tell about you? What story will they tell about me? What story are we going to give? Here, she can just imagine. It has never, a woman not even an Israelite, to lay hand on the servant of God, the priest of God. You know what, brothers and sisters? We may be talking about Jezebel. Today, there are many Jezebels in the form of man, men in the form of women today. A lot of people have lost their reputation. A lot of people have lost their ministry. A lot of people have lost their integrity because there was a Jezebel in the form of a man or a woman that used the sword of the word of mouth to destroy them. The sword of the word of mouth. And I pray that we will not be like that in Jesus' name. I say we will not be like that in Jesus' name. Ahab, your contrition made you to get respite for the Lord because the Bible says it is of the Lord's mercy that we are not consumed. Why? Because his compassion fail not in our lives. Why didn't you remain and continue to explore the mercy of the Lord? And the Bible says, for thou, O Lord, Psalm 86, Psalm 86, Psalm 86, Verse 5. For thou, O Lord, art good and ready to forgive and plenty the mercy unto all them that call upon thee. But Ahab, even though she was contrite, he was contrite, he didn't continue. But I pray that today, wherever we have gone wrong, Whatever we have done, maybe we have done like Jezebel, or we have done like Ahab. We have converted that which does not belong to us. Today, God says, God is good and ready to forgive and plenteous in mercy unto them that call upon him. It's of the Lord's mercy that we are not consumed. His compassion over us does not fail. Today is not the day of judgment. Today is the day of mercy. If we acknowledge our way before the Lord, he will forgive, he will pardon, and he will cleanse, he will forget in Jesus' name. Amen. And if by the grace of God, you are living by the grace of God, the righteous life, 
don't sell your inheritance. No matter the, what the price the enemy wants to pay for it, no matter what he wants to give in exchange, it may look better than what you have. Don't do a deal with the devil. Don't do a deal with the enemy. Hold on to your inheritance because your inheritance is worth much more than whatever the devil can give. God said, we should not give our inheritance to a prince or a king. We should not sell, let our possession be transferred to others. You will not transfer your possession. You will not sell your inheritance. This church, we will not sell our inheritance. We will stand on the word. We will stand on the truth. We will be holy before the Lord. We will be righteous before the Lord. It may be it's a miracle the devil wants to bring. You know, at times the devil can bring miracle. Miracle of provision. Miracle of healing. Miracle of deliverance. And he says, he gives you that and he takes eternal life. I know the Bible says that every other thing we enjoy here on earth, they are for this earth. But when we get to heaven, we don't need miracles. We don't need money. We don't need houses. What will suffice for us is the life we led. And our names in the book of life when we get to heaven. I pray that nothing will take your name out of the book of life. And I'm praying for you that when the devil comes and offer you a price for your prized possession, you will say no like that. But it may threaten your life. Whatever he does, remember God is on your side. Nabot didn't have to plead for, to God. God stood for him. And the punishment that came upon Ahab and his family was greater than that which he meted to Naboth. God will fight for his own. And if you stand for the truth, God will fight for you. Amen. Let's rise up and pray. Youth, let me speak to you. You have a godly heritage. The devil want to, the devil want to, you to exchange it for a temporary blessing. You know, what is it? Never so, uh, Ahab saw. What is it you are seeing? Ahab desired. What is it that you are desiring? That you are coveting after? He set his eyes and his heart, his mind on something. Take your eyes away from that thing that will not help you. Take your heart away from that thing. There's a godly heritage that God has given unto you. Hold on to that godly heritage. Don't allow anything to take the blessings of God from you. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Lord, we just want to thank you for the study we've had this morning. We pray that every one of us, you will help us so that whatever the devil may be offering us for our own possession, we will not do a bad game with him. That like Naboth, we will stand by your word. We will stand by the truth we know in Jesus' name. He said, by the truth, and sell it not. That's the eternal truth that we know. We will not sell in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Praise the Lord. Shall we arise up, please? Covenant keeping God, there is no one like you. Alpha and Omega, there is no one like you. Hallelujah. Come and keep in God, there is no one like you. Alpha and Omega, 
There is no one like you. Hallelujah. Comfort and keeping God. There is no one like you. Alpha and Omega. There is no one like you. Comfort and keeping God. There is no one like you. Because he lives, I, I confess tomorrow. Because he lives, oh, fear is gone. Because I know he holds my future. Her life is just a living dress. Because he lives, because he lives, because he lives, I can face tomorrow, because he lives, oh, there is God, because I know he holds my future. He is the King of Kings. He is the Lord of Lords. His name is Jesus. 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 He is the King. He is the King. He is the King. He is the King. Lord of Lords, His name is Jesus, 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 Jesus. He is the King, He is the King, He is the King of Kings, He is the Lord.
Yeah. 
praise the Lord. Our God is capable to hold the prayer. Let us appreciate the name of the living God. The move of God in our midst. The power of God in our midst. The wonders of God in our midst. The, 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 the time we started to pray. Oh, I appreciate the name of the living God. Our God is good. Our God is good. Oh, our sister said, you say, every breath, sing praise to the Lord. Our God is good. Our God is good. We have seen his hand. We have seen his outstretched arm. The, the, the sick are in the village. The sick in here. The dead in Bethlehem to hear. The dogs who are hopeful, hopeful they are God to spoke. Let us appreciate the name of the living God. It's what came yesterday to every one of us. Adore him, appreciate him. He provides. He met us out at the point of our need. Oh, let us appreciate the name of the living God. Truly, our God is good. Truly, our God is good. Truly, our God is beautiful. He is reliable. He is the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. The God of Daniel. Oh, exalt his name. Exalt his name. Appreciate him. Besides him, there is no other God. Give him more, give him glory. In the mighty name of Jesus. Appreciate him for what he's doing, for what he has promised to do, and what he will continue to do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Psalm 85, verse 1 says, Lord, thou art the favorable unto thy land. Thou hast brought back the captivity of, captivity of Jacob. Thou hast forgiven the iniquity of thy people. Thou hast covered all our sins. Even though he said they are sins, he has covered all our sins. He said, Thou hast taken away all thy wrath. And that is what God has done to us this morning through his word. He said, Thou hast taken away all thy wrath. Thou hast torn thyself from the fierceness of thy anger. Turn us, O God, for, of our salvation. And cause thy anger towards us to cease. That's our prayer this morning. Listen to this again. Turn us, O God, of our salvation. And cause thy anger towards us to do what to cease. We are going to pray unto the Lord. And we are going to tell him and say, Lord, thank you, Lord, for your favor upon us as a church. Thank you, Lord, for your favor upon us, oh God, as an individual. Let us go to God in prayer. And that you are praying that verse one. He said, Lord, that was be favorable unto us, that lad. That was brought back the captive of Jacob. Let us go to God in prayer. Thank you for his favor upon us. We are telling our sorrow. We are telling our difficulties. We are laying them down before the presence of God. He's not in our captivity. He's giving us beautiful hashes. Appreciate him and say, Lord, we are grateful. We are grateful for the favor you have shown unto us. We are grateful, oh no. We are grateful, oh no. The old nation is going back to normal. Even though we are hearing that something that is for God, say that is not our portion. Appreciate the name of the living God. For his favor unto us, for his favor unto us, for his favor unto the church of God, for his favor unto the ministers, for his favor unto all our brothers and sisters, unto all our youth, unto all our children, even the pregnant women, they are not accepted. Appreciate God. Appreciate God and say, Lord, we are grateful. We are grateful, Lord. We just learned about hell, we are not learned about Jezebel. Oh, you, 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 see, you can see who my woman's are. He, 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 he sorted the grace of God, but not with his own heart. And the Bible says, God knows all the intent of our heart. And that's why we have come before him and said, Lord, we are grateful for your favor unto us, O oh God. For, favor, for your favor, God, shown unto us. In Jesus' name we pray. And verse 1 says, we are going to say to God, Turn us, O oh God, of our salvation, and cause thy anger. In many ways, we have converted things that doesn't belong to God. Sometimes it's not for the way it's not for you, you don't need to say it. It's of the heart. That's why you want to go to God in prayer and say, Lord, turn us. These are the times we are with them. That's the time that they walk with the Lord. The Bible says it was even the one who wanted the, the, the bad. But what? For righteousness was deep down in his heart. And that's the one to go to God in prayer. He says, Sack your own Lord. And oh my God, you may think you know yourself, but God knows us better. Let us go to God and pray and say, Lord, turn us so God of our salvation and put thy anger towards me. Put your anger towards my brother and start to seek. Let us go to God in prayer. Let us go to God in prayer. It's sincere in your heart. It's sincere in your heart. I said, Lord, turn me, God. Lord, turn your God. Lord, turn your God. God of my salvation, pray to him. Put your anger towards the church. 
Because your hunger towards me to cease, Lord, in any way that I've forgotten things that doesn't belong to me, in any way that I've said things that I know not to have said, Lord of heaven, the God of my salvation, call me on God. Cause your hunger towards me to see. Cause your hunger towards us as a church to see. When we're supposed to pray to others, when we're supposed to stretch our hand to others, when we know these things are not good, therefore we pretend as we do not know. Let us go to God in prayer and say, Lord, be gracious unto us. Lord, be gracious unto us. Lord, be gracious unto us. In Jesus' name we pray. He has answered. Psalm 118, verse 23. Psalm 118, verse 23 says, It is the Lord's doing, and it is marvelous in our eyes. We are going to appreciate the name of the living God, and we are going to say, Thank you, Lord, for the impact to, to say we have been having since the day we started. And you know, it's a God of continuum. He will, he will not have God to walk and walk away. He will continue. I'm going to say, Lord, we are grateful to you for the impactful crusade, for healing the sick, for delivering the oppressed, Father, for setting the practice. Let us go to God in prayer and say, Lord, we are grateful. We are grateful for the impactful crusade. We are grateful for your house set hands. We are grateful, oh Lord, for the healing. We are grateful, oh Lord, Father, for leading us on the path of righteousness. Let us go to God in prayer and say, Lord, thank you. We want to say thank you, Jesus. It is the Lord doing. It is the Lord doing. Look at someone that says he has spent almost 300,000 naira. And apart from that, there was no solution. But just the word of faith. Just the word of faith. And our Father, the Lord said it. And the Bible said, and the great sister said, it's going to be Just vanish away. You look at the sister, he says, never done nothing else to her. But we are going to appreciate the name of the living of God. Say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for your work in our midst. For the crusade, oh Lord. Thank you for the God, oh Lord. For many souls that have been called to Christ, even through this crusade. We want to appreciate the God of heaven and earth for thee. We want to say thank you. Thank God you will do more. As you thank God you will do more. As you thank God you will do more. Thank you for everything that you have done. Appreciate him and give him glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Second Corinthians 12, 12 says, Second Corinthians 12, 12 says, Truly, the signs of an apostle were wrought among you in all patience, in signs and wonders and mighty deeds. We are going to thank God for our Father and the Lord. And we are thanking God on his behalf. He said, Truly, the signs of an apostle is an apostle indeed. He said, We are wrought among you in all patience. How would we really work by the what? In signs. We saw the signs. And wonders and mighty deeds. And so we are going to pray and say, Lord, truly, renew your apostolic seal upon your minister, upon our GSO Lord. We want to see more than what we have been seen before. We want your anointing to be multiplied upon his staff and upon his ministry. Let us go to God in prayer and say, Lord, multiply your seal of apostolic upon his staff. Let all grace be released upon it. No more than we have been seen before, we want to see more than we have seen before. God of heaven and earth, continue, oh no. Father, to see your servant of God with signs and wonders that has pronounced the name of Jesus. Wherever we pronounce, wherever we practice, or what up, in the name of Jesus, let us pray for all the things that are not back anymore. Let us pray for our receptive, our, our arm here. Let us pray for all our ministers as well, that the hand of the Lord will be upon it. Them all. As God is walking through our GS, if we walk through them as well in Jesus' name, the word of God will not fall into the ground. It will fulfill the very purpose by the said in the name of Jesus Christ. Let us pray, let us pray. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Because of our time, Daniel 11, verse 2 says, For they that know their the Lord shall do exploits. And just paraphrasing it now, and we are going to pray and say, Lord, in this crusade, Lord. Now, I will was just coming to my mind, you know, I, I was thinking, what can we do? Apart from we telling others, what can we do for all these elderly women that are staying at home? How can we be of benefit to them? Maybe you can take your phone to them, stay with them, and then release them. Now you are going to divide and say, they are no dear God. This time you are going to go preaching. All you are saying is, what is that problem in your life? God is able to solve it. If they, go, if they have made it so much easy, we are going to pray in this crusade, Lord. Give me an insight of what to do to be of benefit to others around so that we will gain what we also have been gaining. Let us pray that Lord, what's going to do a stop in this crusade? No, Lord, let 
we don't just be here. Let me be of benefit or that. Pray unto the Lord. Pray unto the Lord. As you are praying, God will give you an insight of what to do to help your neighbor, to help your brother, to help your sister that have not known the Lord. That have not known the Lord. Pray, God, open my eyes. Lord, put it in my heart. What should I do? What do I have to do, Lord, to be able to do expert with this crusade, to bring souls to the kingdom? Pray unto the Lord. The Bible says, I said, the says, signs are God that they will not believe that they will believe in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. That's what we want to go to God in prayer. We are told in the presence of God. The Bible says, in his presence, there is fullness of joy. What's that that you have been giving God for today? You ask me to see, God told me I love you to go and hear this. The word of God is going to come, you are going to pray unto the Lord. That means of your life, I mean, all that rest it. But God knows it, pray God, and the time we give God, cause our heart to be full of joy. Pray unto the Lord as the Lord. Pray unto the Lord as the Lord. Pray unto the Lord as the Lord. Lord, 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 don't let the word tear me. Lord, don't let the word tear me. God will do it, he will perfect it. He has done it. In Jesus' name, we pray. Because of our time, let's bring that our open quickly. Let's bring that our open quickly, quickly, quickly. I want you to prophesy your office. Don't say you don't have, you have, because the Bible says if you listen to the Philadelphia, the Bible out of their poverty, they are not poor, but they are rich. Say, Lord, as I give unto you, you will multiply. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Our Father in heaven, we thank you, we appreciate you so much, Father, for this opportunity. Father, we ask you, O Lord, of heaven and earth, as we have come before you. You will bless us abundantly in Jesus' name. Amen. Lord, I pray. Let us set the word over our mouth in Jesus' name. Amen. Let us also of benefit to people around us in Jesus' name. Amen. And as we give unto you, Lord, I pray you multiply it in Jesus' name. Amen. Father, today is another day. Another day of open door. Another day of Father's success. I pray that every one of us, oh God, will reach us with your goodness in Jesus' name. Amen. Continue with us as we continue, Lord. Thank you for asking, Father, for the answer to you. In Jesus' name, we For those that are watching me with us for the first time, we're going to give the announcements about our time of worship. On Sundays like this, we start at nine with prayers. So join us every Sunday for our Sunday worship service. And let me just use this one quickly to say areas four and five will be coming next Sunday to the church. Areas four and five will be coming next Sunday physically to the church. Also, evenings on Sundays, we have what is known as Home Caring Fellowship. For adults, it starts at six. For children, it starts at quarter to five. But tonight, we are not going to be having the House Caring Fellowship, Home Caring Fellowship tonight. We'll be joining Calaba for the signs and wonders. And the signs and wonders will continue in our lives in Jesus' name. So on Tuesday as well, we have uh, our Bible study, and it starts at 7 p.m. 
7 p.m. for Bible study. But I think this Tuesday as well, we'll be joining Alaba for that program. That will be conveyed to us as well. On Wednesdays at 8 o'clock, the women do meet for prayers. So you see the uh, details so you can join them. Women's meeting, prayer meeting on Wednesdays starts at 8 p.m. And on Friday, we have our revival hour. Join us at 7 p.m. also on Fridays. Next Saturday is going to be the workers' meeting. So all workers are supposed to be here next Saturday, as usual, at 2 p.m. And then on Sunday, we start our Sunday worship at 9 a.m. There are any other announcements? It will be conveyed to us. If you are worshiping with us for the first time, you want to get in touch with our pastor, our regional overseer, is displayed there. Please get in touch and your request will be met by God in Jesus' name. We're going to be taking our Bible reading now. Bible reading is taken from the book of Matthew, chapter 16 and 17. Matthew, chapter 16 and 17. Let's have a word of prayer. Our Heavenly Father, we just worship and adore you again this day. Thank you, Lord God, for the blessings we have been receiving from you. As we go into your word now, speak unto us again in Jesus' name. In Jesus' mighty name, we we'll pray. The Pharisees also with the Sadducees came, and tempting, desired him that he would show them a sign from heaven. He answered and said unto them, When it is evening, ye say, It will be fair weather, for the sky is red. And in the morning, it will be foul weather today, for the sky is red and lowering. O oh, ye hypocrites, ye can discern the face of the sky, but can ye not discern the signs of the times? A wicked and adulterous generation seeketh after a sign, and there shall no sign be given unto it, but the sign of the prophet Jonas. And he left them and departed. And when his disciples were come to the other side, they had forgotten to take bread. Then Jesus said unto them, Take heed and beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and of the Sadducees. And they reasoned among themselves, saying, It is because we have taken no bread. Which when Jesus perceived, he said unto them, O ye of little faith, why reason ye among yourselves, because ye have brought no bread? Do ye not yet understand, neither remember, the five loaves of the five thousand, and how many baskets ye took up? Neither the seven loaves of the four thousand, and how many baskets ye took up? How is it? that ye do not understand that I spake it not to you concerning bread, that ye should beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and of the Sadducees. Then understood they how that he bade them not beware of the leaven of bread, but of the doctrine of the Pharisees and of the Sadducees. When Jesus came into the coasts of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, saying, Whom do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? And they said, Some say that thou art John the Baptist, some Elias, and others Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. He saith unto them, But whom say ye that I am? And Simon Peter answered and said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Blessed art thou, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood hath not revealed it unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven. And I say also unto thee that thou art Peter, and upon this rock, I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And I will give unto thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatsoever thou shalt loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Then charged he his disciples that they should tell no man that he was Jesus the Christ. From that time forth began Jesus to show unto his disciples how that he must go unto Jerusalem, and suffer many things of the elders and chief priests and scribes, and be killed, and be raised again the third day. Then Peter took him and began to rebuke him, saying, Be it far from thee, Lord, this shall not be unto thee. But he turned and said unto Peter, Get thee behind me, Satan. Thou art an offense unto me, for thou savorest not the things that be of God, but those that be of men. 
Then said Jesus unto his disciples, If any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whosoever will save his life shall lose it. And whosoever will lose his life for my sake shall find it. For what is a man profited if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? For the Son of Man shall come in the glory of his Father with his angels, and then he shall reward every man according to his works. Verily I say unto you, there be some standing here which shall not taste of death till they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. Chapter 17 and after six days, Jesus taketh Peter, James, and John, his brother, and bringeth them up into an high mountain apart, and was transfigured before them. And his face did shine as the sun, and his raiment was white as the light. And behold, there appeared unto them Moses and Elias talking with him. Then answered Peter and said unto Jesus, Lord, it is good for us to be here, if thou wilt. Let us make here three tabernacles, one for thee, and one for Moses, and one for Elias. While he yet spake, behold, a bright cloud overshadowed them, and behold, a voice out of the cloud which said, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. Hear ye him. And when the disciples heard it, they fell on their face and were sore afraid. And Jesus came and touched them and said, Arise, and be not afraid. And when they had lifted up their eyes, they saw no man save Jesus only. And as they came down from the mountain, Jesus charged them, saying, Tell the vision to no man until the Son of Man be risen again from the dead. And his disciples asked him, saying, Why then say the scribes that Elias must first come? And Jesus answered and said unto them, Elias truly shall first come and restore all things. But I say unto you that Elias is come already. And they knew him not, but have done unto him whatsoever they listed. Likewise shall also the Son of Man suffer of them. Then the disciples understood that he spake unto them of John the Baptist. And when they were come to the multitude, there came to him a certain man kneeling down to him and saying, Lord, have mercy on my son, for he is lunatic and sore vexed. For oft times he falleth into the fire and oft into the water. And I brought him to thy disciples, and they could not cure him. Then Jesus answered and said, O oh, faithless and perverse generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I suffer you? Bring him hither to me. And Jesus rebuked the devil, and he departed out of him, and the child was cured from that very hour. Then came the disciples to Jesus apart and said, Why could not we cast him out? And Jesus said unto them, Because of your unbelief. For verily I say unto you, if ye have faith as a grain of mustard seed, ye shall say unto this mountain, Remove hence to yonder place, and it shall remove, and nothing shall be impossible unto you. Howbeit this kind goeth not out but by prayer and fasting. And while they abode in Galilee, Jesus said unto them, The Son of Man shall be betrayed into the hands of men, and they shall kill him, and the third day he shall be raised again. And they were exceeding sorry. And when they were come to Capernaum, they that received tribute money came to Peter and said, Doth not your master pay tribute? He said, Yes. And when he was come into the house, Jesus prevented him, saying, What thinkest thou, Simon? Of whom do the kings of the earth take custom or tribute, of their own children or of strangers? Peter saith unto him, Of strangers. Jesus saith unto him, Then are the children free. Notwithstanding, lest we should offend them, go thou to the sea, and cast an hook, and take up the fish that first cometh up. And when thou hast opened his mouth, thou shalt find a piece of money. That take, and give unto them for me and thee. Praise the Lord. We pray that the blessings that in the reading of the word of the Lord will be ours in Jesus' name. We'll be singing from our gospel hymns and songs in number 153 with signs following. When first the risen Lord of power, his chosen ones sent forth a charge he gave that solemn hour to preach his 
saving worth. Go ye, said he, to all mankind, declared my word, and ye shall find. These signs shall surely follow them who on my name believe. Let's rise up as we listen to the team. When first the risen Lord of power His chosen ones sent forth A charge He gave that solemn heart To preach His saving word Go He said He to all mankind Declare my word and ye shall find this I shall surely follow them who all my name believe when first there is a Lord of power his chosen ones sent forth a child he gave that solemn heart to preach his saving word. Go ye, said he, to all mankind, declare my word, and ye shall find. This I shall surely follow them who are my name. No demon shall be for them stand, no poison do them harm. No salty serpent in their heart cause pain or dread alarm. For Satan's kingdom he welcome to give his people I shall surely follow them who are my name believe. They shall with all the tongues declare the wonders of their God. The sick beneath their hands by prayer shall rise to prove my word. So let it be firm as his throne stands this clear promise to his own. This I shall surely follow them who are my name Run with the flame of Pentecost, a faithful, fearless band proclaimed his name, a ransomed host arose from every land. The Lord was with them from on high, his This I shall surely follow them who are my name and believe. No word of thine is void of power, no promise, Lord, is vain. Be this a Pentecost. Confirm thy word again, nor canst thou fail, thou art the same as when of all thou didst proclaim. This 
sign shall surely follow them who are my name
precious Lord, there are birthdays to be born. At the crosses will come victory. Let me stand every test, if it takes a crown of toes. Lord, make my living more and more like thee. Lord, make my living a blessing each day. In talking, Lord, give me the right words to say. When sorrow overtake me, when friends would forsake me, Lord, make my living. More and more like me. I know how you love when you freely took my place all alone there yeah, on dark Calvary as a child let me be can't at war be of thy grace Lord make my living more and more like thee. Lord, make my living a blessing each day. When talking, Lord, give me the right words to say. When sorrow overtake me, when friends would forsake me. Lord, make my living more and more like thee. Lord, make my living a blessing each day. We talking, Lord, give me the right words to say. When sorrow overtake me, when friends would forsake me. Lord, make my living more and more like Praise the Lord. Let's stand up on our feet. Let's rise up. We want to commit our session to the Lord. And the message we are going to listen to now is a message from our Father in the Lord. And we want God to speak to us because we want to be more like Jesus. Let's commit our session to the Lord. And you know we are going through this uh, program, uh, you know, Signs and Wonders. So it's a special Sunday. I don't know, you want to look at yourself, you want to look at what, you know, what thing you have in your, your body that you want to be dealt with. The message is coming today and you are going to receive your miracle in Jesus' name. Amen. So you're not going to live here empty-handed. Commit yourself unto the Lord. Ask the Lord to make his word have a wonderful, super impact, you know, upon you, body, soul, and spirit. You know, from the crown of your head to the soles of your feet, pray that the word of the Lord will impact your life. Let's ask the Lord to speak to us. Come on, you.
Everybody praise the Lord. Calabar Church, I said praise the Lord. What a wonderful service today. A colorful service today. A global service today. And I pray that the power of the Lord will be manifested in your life in Jesus' name. Thank you, choir. The King is coming. The King is coming. But there's something to think about. There are people that know the King is coming, but there's a question that Jesus asked before he went away. He said, when the Son of Man cometh, shall he find faith on the earth? He didn't say, shall he find denomination? A church or religion or people going to church or people carrying the Bible when the Son of Man cometh, shall he find faith on the earth, the faith that brings salvation, the faith that brings holiness and sanctification, the faith that relies on the power of the Lord alone. Whatever challenge you have, whatever problem is in your life, the faith that holds on to Jesus Christ. And he says, he is my savior, he is my Lord, he is the solution to my problem. Not just coming to church, there are people who just come to church, come to church. He didn't say, shall he find church on the earth? Shall he find faith in the earth? That's why today I'm going to talk to you on signs and wonders that will come to you by faith. And as we believe on the Lord today, signs, wonders, miracles, Power in your life in Jesus' name. Raise up those hands, two hands to the Lord in prayer, Father, in the name of Jesus. I come to you today on behalf of people, and I pray, Lord, your past faith in every heart in Jesus' name. And I also pray you plant the feet of everyone, the mind and the heart and the spirit, the soul of everyone on the faith that you expect you when you come on the final day in Jesus' name. Lord, today, let your miracle flow everywhere, even in this morning service in Jesus' name. Bless all our children. Bless all our youths. Bless all our adults and the various choirs from all the nations, those who sang and those who did not sing, those who are yet to sing. Bless everyone in Jesus' name. Let the power of the Lord penetrate every heart today in Jesus' name. And when you come, I pray you'll find faith in every one of our hearts and lives in Jesus' name. We thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. Give me a good calabar. Amen before you sit down. God bless you. You can sit down. We're coming to Isaiah chapter eight i say chapter eight and i'm reading to you there from verse 18 i say chapter eight and we're reading from verse 18 look at what the lord is saying he says behold i and the children whom the lord has given me are for signs and wonders in israel from the Lord of hosts, which dwelleth in Mount Zion. Look at that. Behold, I am the Lord. And he says, I, that's the Lord speaking. Although I say, was the first one talking primarily. And he's saying, he's got a wife, a prophetess, he's got children. And those children are named in a peculiar way. And they were to be signs and wonders to the land of Israel. Take it out of the hand of Isaiah. And let Jesus Christ speak to you and speak to me. Here the Lord himself is saying, Behold, I 
I the Savior, behold I, I the Redeemer, behold I, I the Lord and the children whom the Lord has given me. He was praying for his own disciples. He said, those who have given unto me, I gave them your word and they have accepted your word and they have known that I came from thee. I and the children and the disciples and the born again believers and the brothers and the sisters and the brethren whom thou was given unto me. They are for signs and wonders. Anybody there for signs and wonders in this land, in your location there, in your family there, in your surrounding there, in every country we find those who listen to the word of God, those who accept the word of God, it says, behold them, look at them, it'll be for signs and for wonders. And I come to you today, announcing to you that as we come today, you can behold, you behold Christ at Calvary. You behold Christ on the day of resurrection. You behold Christ as he ascended up to heaven. And then he says, everyone who beholds, everyone who believes, and is saved, and is born again. He becomes a child of God. And then God says, they be my sons, and they be my daughters. He says, every one of them without exception, I and the children whom the Lord has given me were for signs and for wonders in this land, on this earth. And I claim that for myself. I about you. I said, I claim that for myself. I am for signs and wonders. Everywhere I go, I am for signs and wonders. Everywhere I preach, I am for signs and wonders. Anywhere I stay, I am for signs and wonders. And today, this morning is coming your way. You'll be for signs and wonders in Jesus' name. Now, I'm talking to you today on the miracle of signs and wonders. The miracle of signs and wonders. I want you to notice uh, those three words. Number one, miracle. Number two, signs. Number three, wonders. They go together. And this morning, as the miracle power of the name of the Lord is coming your way, miracle in your life. Signs in your life. Wonders in your life. In Jesus' name. Look at Hebrews chapter 2. I'm looking at verse 4. Hebrews chapter 2. We're looking at verse 4. And he's talking, he's going to give us the three words I mentioned now. Look at this. God also bearing them witness, them who? Them, the sons whom thou hast given me, who are for signs and wonders in the land. It says, God also bearing the witness both with number one signs, number two wonders, and number three now with diverse miracles and, and the gifts of the Holy Ghost according to his will. According to his will. You come in the will of God. The will of God is your salvation. You come to that will. The will of God is for your sanctification. You come into that will. The will of God is that you have the power and the strength to abide and to obey the word of God. And you come into that will of God, which is obedience to the Lord. Then, according to his will, miracle in your life. Signs in your life. Can you see how that calabar amen is so weak? And then there have been wonders in your life in Jesus' name. Today, the miracle, the miracle of signs and uh, wonders. We're going to do something today. Now, when I say miracle, what does that mean? How can I show people? How can I bring out people that if I do what they did, they had miracles in their lives. I too, I will have miracles in my life. 
I'm going to spell out that word miracle M. That's Moses, I, that's Isaiah, and R, that's Ruth, A, that's Abraham, C, that is Caleb, and L, that's Levi. Levi is another name for Matthew, and then E, that is Elisha. I'm going to line them up. I want to find out these were followers of the Lord. And these were sons and daughters of the Lord. Behold these children that the Lord has brought into the kingdom. All of them without exception. They are for signs and for wonders in the land. And then as you look at what they did and what they said and how they believed. And you do the same thing. I'm telling you, if you go this way, power will run after you. If you come this way, miracle will run after you. If you're sitting down, miracle will sit down there with you. And if you stand up, miracle signs and wonders will come upon your life in Jesus' name. Today, you cannot escape the miracle power of the Lord. Moses, Isaiah, Ruth, Abraham, Caleb, Levi, that's Matthew, and Elisha, I will have my own portion. Say it aloud now. You'll have it in Jesus' name. How does that happen? Number one, believing like Moses. Believing like Moses. Number two, becoming like Isaiah. Becoming like Isaiah. Number three is beginning like Ruth. And then number four is belonging like Abraham. Number five, bearing up. When others say no, it cannot happen. And then you speak up and you bear up and you stand alone, bearing up like Caleb. And then begotten like Levi. Then Elisha, burning the bridge behind you like Elisha. If you go through that with all your heart, with all your soul, you'll be a recipient of miracles. I didn't hear my amen. Yeah. And you will be a dispenser of miracles. You will receive and you will give it out in Jesus' name. Let's go very quickly. Number one. Believing like Moses. We're looking at Hebrews chapter 11, and I'm reading from verse 24. Hebrews chapter 11, we're looking at verse 24. By faith, Moses, everything he did by faith, he came out of Egypt by faith. He led the children of Israel by faith. Water came out of the rock, and it's by faith. And then he opened the Red Sea. That's by faith. He led them, and they got manna to eat every day. And there was no lack during the time of his ministry. And everything was by faith. And if you will come and believe like Moses, they are going to have miracle following you every day of your life. In Jesus' name, by faith. When he was come to years, he refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter. He said, no, if you're going to be a man of faith, a man of signs and wonders, a man of miracles, you have to know what to say no to. When the devil comes, he wants to make you a slave, a servant, you say no. When Pharaoh comes, wants to make you a slave, a servant, even a son, you say no, you cannot serve two masters. If you're serving the Lord, you cannot serve Pharaoh at the same time. And when he came to years, the year of decision, today you come to a day of decision in your life. And you choose where you will go. If you're going to follow this way with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and you deny yourself of what the world is offering you, and what Pharaoh is offering you, and what Satan is offering you, and you say, I have decided to follow Jesus, no turning back, no turning back. The Lord is preparing another kingdom. I will be there, no turning back, no turning back. All my friends may forsake me. I will follow the Lord, no turning back, no turning back. And you are able to say no to the flesh and no to the world and no to the prince of this life. Miracle will shoot up in your life, even today in Jesus' name. 
and look at verse 25. In verse 25, it said, you sin rather. It was a choice, a choice. It's not that Mama is going to church and following her. Papa says, I'm a member of this uh, church, and therefore I'm following him. He chose by himself. The Lord puts two ways before you. There is a broad way. Everybody can do whatever they want to do. But there is a narrow way that takes you and Jesus, and then uh, there will be salvation, there will be peace, and there will be life, abundant life, and there will be victory, dominion in your life. And you choose to follow that narrow way. When you make that choice, it's the greatest, wiser choice you can make in your life power will attend to you miracle will attend to you and that's what moses did that's why we say believing like moses choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of god than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season than to enjoy the drinking and the dancing, and the nightclubs, and the occult, and the magic, and everything in Egypt to enjoy that for a sin. said, no, I come out of darkness, and I come to the light. I'm going to live and abide in the light. When you do that in your life, and you close the door to all those gangs, you close the door to all the occultism, and then you come to the Lord, you say, I choose to follow the Lord and the way of life no power will ever overcome you in your life. Look at verse 26. In verse 26, esteeming the reproach of Christ, greater riches than the treasures in Egypt. For he had respect on the recompense of the reward. And then in verse 27, we're told by faith, he forsook Egypt, not fearing the wrath of the king. For he endured as seeing him who is invisible. Seeing him who is invisible, he knew that the invisible always saw him. Whatever he said, wherever he went, whatever he did, the invisible one, the immortal one, the omnipotent one, and the omniscient one always saw him. And then he himself said, the Lord sees me every time, and I see the invisible everyone. When sickness comes, it says the healer is there, even though he's invisible. And when there's any miracle needed, it says the miracle worker is there, even though he appears invisible. When you live like that in your life, you're going to be victorious. I am going to be victorious. And no power will be able to conquer you any time in your life in Jesus' name. Number two, becoming like Isaiah. Becoming like Isaiah. Look at Isaiah chapter 6, and I'm reading from verse 5. Then said I, woe is me, for I am undone, because I am a man of unclean lips, and I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips. For mine eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. You know, Isaiah did not confess the sins of other people. There are people in this land, there are people in our country, there are people in every country who did say our country is bad because leader so and so is bad, because counselor so and so is bad, our local government does not have everything else to have, and it is the fault of the senator. They confess the sins of other people if you're going to become a miracle carrier. If you're going to become a partner to the miracle worker, the Lord Jesus Christ, you leave all those excuses and you are not confessing the sin of the Pharisee, the sin of the Sadducee, and the sin of other people. You come like I say, who is me? For I am undone because I am a man of unclean leaves. Why is there no power in your church? Is the fault of so and so? Uh -uh, it's your fault. Why do we not see miracles everywhere in your locality? Is the voice a fault or so and so? No, it's your fault when you come, like I say, and you want to become like I say, and you look at your prayerlessness, and you look at your deadness, 
and you look at your and not feeling anything you are just there you come to church and you go back from church and you are not spending time in fervent prayer in intercession and you are not pleading and praying for the power of god to come down and you're only thinking when the pastors are all right everything will be all right i am sick because the pastors are not praying for me i am this because they are not helping me when you turn away from all of them and then you become like i say you say i know the deadness of my heart and i know the carelessness of my life and i know the carelessness of my own tongue of my own speech and you say like i say i am a man upon clean lips i dwell in the midst of the people upon clean lips for mine eyes have seen the king the lord of hosts look at verse 6 but told then flew one of the seraphims unto him, having a light coal in his hand, which he had taken up with the tongues from off the altar. Then in verse 7, it says, and he laid it upon my mouth. Well, you don't dodge the fire of that hole and the fervency of that word, and the fervency of what the Lord is pointing out to you, when you don't dodge that, when you stay calm there, and you stay receptive there, and the fire from the altar touches your heart, touches your soul, pierces into the very blood, has touched thy leaves, and thine iniquity is taken away, and thy sin apart. Today, if you allow him, he will put you. It will purify you. Everything unclean, everything defiling, it will take away. And then you will hear the voice of the Lord in verse 8. In verse 8, it says, And I heard, also I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send? They will send you. I said, They will send you. I'm just a young person. The Lord cannot send a person like me. He sent Joseph, he sent Samuel. The Lord will send you. And just a woman, the Lord cannot send a woman like me. He said, Deborah, he said, Esther, the Lord will send you. And just a man, I'm too old now. The Lord cannot send me. He said, Zacharias, at the time of old age with Elizabeth, and they gave back to John the Baptist that brought the word of the Lord unto the people as a forerunner of the Savior of the Lord. If you send them, the Lord will send you. They will send me. What are you? It will send you in Jesus' name. Somebody said, you are 80 years already. Don't you think it's too late now? The Lord cannot send you anymore. I said, you are not reading the Bible. He sent Moses at the age of 80. And the Lord has sent me to you today. Power in your life. The pardon of God in your life. And great things will happen in your life in Jesus' name. Also, I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send? And who will go for us? Then said I, Here am I, send me. The Lord will send you in Jesus' name. Believe like Moses, become like Isaiah, beginning like Ruth beginning like Ruth. You have to begin somewhere. He tells us in Ruth, look at Ruth chapter 1, I mean it from verse 14. And he lifted up their voice and went again and upper kissed her mother-in-law but Ruth clave unto her. Ruth and Opa had been together in the same family, Marina, two brothers, one here, one there, eventually those brothers died, their husbands died, and then Naomi wanted to go back to the land of Israel, to the land of blessing. And then Opa and Ruth said, we will go with you. And Naomi said, you cannot go with me because you're still young and you're ladies, you're widows, young widows. If you follow me, there's no husband. I don't know how they will receive you when we get to the land. The people are so many. That's what some people say in deeper life there. If I join them, if I stay with them, nobody will recognize me. But I want to stay in a small little church. 
we are 13 or 17 and then everybody is recognized and so Opa went back I will not go back you didn't say that with decision you didn't say that with determination Opa went back I will not go back he's a mother-in-law but Ruth clave unto her that's the beginning that's the beginning when you clinch to the Lord when you cleave to the Lord, when you abide with the Lord, when you say, I come, I come to the Lord, and I will never go back again. Look at verse 15, in verse 15, and she said, Now, Mr. Behold, thy sister in law is gone back unto our people and unto our gods. Return thou after thy sister in law. Look at verse 16, and Ruth said, and Ruth said, you see, there are people, when we say we're going to pray now, they just stand there like a log of wood. They say nothing. Other people are praying. They're saying, I give my heart to you. I give my life to you. I will never turn back again. Hold me and cleanse me. Take away all my sin and all the weakness in my life. Take all the weaknesses away. I want to abide in the Lord. When other people are praying like that, fervently, they just keep quiet. Ruth did not keep quiet. If you're going to be a partaker, I'm going to be a partaker. What are you? You'll be a partaker in Jesus' name. You will not keep quiet. I say, you know, the people don't go yet. The service is not finished. Like Papa, they go away. They are not thinking of what they have heard. They are not bringing what they have heard to the Lord in prayer. Ruth stayed there. And then Ruth said, entreat me not to leave thee. Not to return from following after thee, for whither thou goest, I will go. Whither thou goest, I will go. I didn't hear your amen. That's what to tell the Lord Jesus Christ. He said, I go to heaven and I will come again and receive you unto myself, so that where I am, there you will be also and when you are praying you are telling the lord i will never leave you i will never forsake you that heaven you have gone whither you have gone i am going there i will see you in heaven what is the person i'm talking about there i will see you in heaven whither you go there i will go and when the down lodges there i will lodge my people Thy people shall be my people, and thy God shall be my God. Amen. Verse yeah. 17, whither thou diest, will I, will I die? Where thou diest, there will I die, and there will I be buried. And the Lord do so to me, and more also, if aught but death but thee and me. And then in verse 18, when she saw, now me saw that, that she, Ruth, was steadfastly minded to go with her. Then she left speaking unto her. And they went through together. Look at this, look at this. The blessing that Ruth received was even greater than the one Naomi received. You are in for blessing. You are in for salvation. And you are in for all the inheritance of the kingdom in Jesus' name. When you believe like Moses, when you become like Isaiah, when you begin like Ruth. Look at the next one now. Belonging like Abraham. Belonging like Abraham. Abraham lived in the Old Testament. But God gave him a special place in his heart. God will give you a special place. If you do like Abraham, look at, look at uh, Hebrews 11. Hebrews 11. And I'm reading here from verse 8. By faith. You know it's by faith. You will not see the future. All that the Lord is telling you. You know, believers will say sin is believing, but believing is sin. Everything you have heard in this signs and wonders crusade, you will see in your life. Yeah. Look at that, Hebrews chapter 11, verse 8, by faith. When he was called to go out into a place which he should after receive for an inheritance, 
He obeyed. He obeyed. He had not been there before. He obeyed. He was hearing the call for the first time. He obeyed. He knew God is calling me. And God is calling you today. He calls you to repentance. He calls you to salvation. He calls you to sanctification. He calls you to a worthy work for the Lord. And because he's calling you, and he calls you to repentance, he, came, he said, I came not to call the righteous, the self-righteous, but I came to call everyone who will realize it's a sinner. I came to call them to repentance. I came to call them to say, turn away, turn away from your sin, from your transgression. Why will you die, O children of Israel? And as you stand up and you respond to that call, I'm saying, I hear his voice. He's calling me out of darkness. He's calling me out of sin. He's calling me out of evil. He's calling me from my past life. And he wants me to come into a new life. I respond. That's how he calls Abraham. And Abraham responded. He calls you to salvation. His name shall be called Jesus. For he shall save his people from their sins. And then you come. The grace of God will come to you. The grace that brings salvation has appeared unto all men and that grace is teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly laws we should live righteously and soberly and godly in this present world as you hear that call the call to repentance and the call to salvation and the call to holiness called to sanctification this is the will of God, even your sanctification, that he says to ye holy, as he who has called you is holy. And you respond to that call, repentance, salvation, sanctification, and holiness, like Abraham responded, the power of God will show up in your life. Look at this, by faith, Abraham, when he was called to go out, into a place which he should after receive for inheritance. He obeyed. Today, you will obey. I will obey. He obeyed and he went out not knowing whither he went. And then, any time after that, they mentioned Abraham. Abraham was the friend of God. And you'll be a friend of God. You'll be a child of God. All the world of partition between you and God, everything will be broken down in Jesus' name. And now, bearing up like Caleb. Bearing up like Caleb. You see, there are people, once other people have spoken and they said it's not possible, we cannot go up there. We cannot serve the Lord. Nobody can live without sin. That's what they say. Everybody will be chewing tobacco all through their lives. Everybody will be drinking rum and drinking alcohol all through their lives. Even so and so is drinking and so and so is drinking. And I cannot be free. Once they hear other people saying that, they say, well, everybody says we cannot be free. They too cannot be free. Look up here. I am free. Say that aloud. I am free. And you know, they say everybody must bend down to the idol of the locality and they must worship the idol of the community. And if they don't worship, you know, some bad things will happen to them. I hear of so and so, I hear of so and so. So, what can I do now as everybody is worshiping? I too, I will worship, I will stand apart. I said, I will stand apart. Whatever others do, others may, but I will not. The Lord will give you that courage in the heart of Caleb and pass that courage into your life in Jesus' name. And you bear up like Caleb. Look at Numbers chapter 14. I'm reading from verse 4. Numbers chapter 14. We're looking at verse 4. And they said one to another, let us make a captain and let us return to Egypt. They want to backslide. I will not backslide with them. I said I will not backslide with them. They want to become slaves again. They want to go back to Pharaoh again. And they want to tell Pharaoh, we're sorry that we're left. We have come back now. They want to put rope in our, on our neck. 
tears our neck. You want to put rope and cup in our hands, here we are. You want to tie us in our feet, here we were, here we are. There are people like that, they go back to the world, they go to tell the man in the shrine, they say their papa, they call him their papa, they said, we're sorry we let. I am not sorry. I said, I am not sorry. You, you see that a girl, that lady, she needs a 10 naira. She needs a 100 naira. And she cannot pray to the God of heaven. And then she goes to the, you know, old sin partner. And the sin partner said, uh -uh, I thought you said you are born again now. I thought you said you have, you have gone with Jesus. Why are you coming to me again? And then she opens our, her mouth and said, I am sorry. He says sorry to the old sin partner. He said, I have come back. Since I left, I never went back there. And I am still standing. And you will stand in Jesus' name. So all those people said, let us make a captain. And let us return into Egypt. Look at verse 5. In verse 5, then Moses and Aaron fell on their faces before all the assembly of the congregation of the children of Israel. Look at verse 6. In verse 6, and Joshua, the son of Nun, and Caleb, and Caleb, the son of Jephunneh, which were of them that searched the land, wrench their clothes. Look at verse 7. It says, And they speak unto the company of the children of Israel, saying, The land which we pass through to search each is an exceeding good land. Then in verse 8, look at what he said, The Lord give the light in us, then it will bring us into this land and give it unto us. Unto us. I'm one of them. I'm one of them. A land which flowed and on. In verse 9, it only rebel not ye against the Lord, neither fear ye the people of the land, for they are bread for us. Their defense is departed from them. The Lord is with us. Fear them not. Anybody afraid there? Fear them not. You come to the Lord, He will be your defender. He will be your redeemer. He will be your protector. And every evil will be shielded away from you in Jesus' name. That the man, Caleb, he bore it up. He stood up, his shoulders were squared. He said, you want to go back to Egypt? No, I'm not going back to Egypt. I'm going to Canaan land. I'm going to the promised land. And that man Caleb reached that promised land by faith, by the grace of God. He reached there. I will reach there. I said, I will reach there. Look at Joshua chapter 14. I'm reading from verse 10, Joshua chapter 14. We're looking at verse 10. And now behold, the Lord has kept me alive. As he said, these 40 and 5 years, even since the Lord spake the word unto Moses, while the children of Israel wandered in the wilderness, and lo, I am this day first come and five years old. In verse 11, it says, As yet I am as strong this day as I was in the day that Moses sent me. And my strength, as my strength was then, even so is my strength now. For war, but to go out and to come in. Verse 12, it says, Now, therefore, because I'm thankful now, therefore, because I keep on following, even when other people were saying uh, they cannot follow, now, therefore, give me this mountain. The Lord will give you the mountain. Yeah. You will climb every mountain. Yeah. You will move any mountain you want to move. And the power of God will never decrease or cease in your life in Jesus' name. 
Bethel, begotten like Levi. Begotten like Levi. We're coming to uh, Matthew, Luke chapter 5. In Luke chapter 5, we're reading from verse 27. And after these things, he went forth and he saw a publican named Levi sitting at the reception, at the receipt of customs. And he said unto him, follow me. And thank God he heard the voice of the Savior. And thank God here today, you are hearing the voice of your Lord. I said you are hearing the voice of the Lord. And he says, get up, whatever it is you are doing. However much you enjoy where you are, the custom, it says, there's something better for you. My brother, there's something higher for you. My sister, there's something greater for you. And it says, get up and follow me. I pray that that thing God is going to give you as you follow the Lord, you will not miss it in Jesus' name. And then in verse 28, we're told, and he left all. He didn't say, I'll hide this other sin in my bosom. I'll hide this other evil in my bosom. I'll hide that other trade, should in case I will need it later. He left all and rose up and he followed him. That's how he became a disciple. From a disciple, he became an apostle. And then the Lord said, not only that, all you that have followed me in this generation, you will sit on the 12 thrones and you'll be judging the 12 tribes of Israel. And their names, the names of all those apostles are reaching at the gate of New Jerusalem. Your name will be there. My name will be there. My name will be there. When you, when you become begotten, born again, like Levi. Now, Elisha, born in the bridge behind you, like Elisha. What does that mean? You came to the Lord, and you went through the bridge, over the bridge. And then you look back, you say, I will never go back on that bridge anymore. And you burn that bridge behind you. And you say, I'm not going back. Whatever happens, I am with the Lord. I will forever be with the Lord. That's what Elisha did. That's how he received the double portion of the power of the Spirit of God upon Elijah. A double portion is coming upon your life. What are you? Double portion. Shout it out. Look at First Kings chapter 19, and I'm reading from verse 19. So he departed hence and found Elisha, the son of Shaphat, who was plowing with 12 yoke of oxen before him, and he with the 12. And Elijah passed by and cast his mantle upon him. A new mantle is coming upon your life today. Mantle of power. Mantle of miracle, mantle of signs and wonders, mantle of favor with God is coming upon your life in Jesus' name. In verse 20, they were told, and he left the oxen and he ran after Elijah. How would Elijah know that he had decided to follow? He put his faith, his decision into action into expression and he ran after Elijah and said let me I pray the kiss my father and my mother what was saying is was coming to the farm today I didn't tell them their mommy I will not come back so they will not be looking for me let me just tell them I am going on with the man of God and you are going on with the son of God you are going on with the Lord Jesus Christ and as you come to follow the Lord today, you will never go back again in Jesus' name. And he said unto him, go back again. What have I done to thee? Verse 21. In verse 21, and he returned back from him. And he took a yoke of oxen and slew them and boiled their flesh with the instruments of the oxen and gave unto the people, and they did eat. Then he arose, and he went after Elijah, 
and ministered unto him. And since that time that he came to Elijah, he never went back. I will not go back. He never looked back. I will not look back. He never even thought, is this what I'll be doing here, pouring water on the hand of Elijah? He don't I have something greater to do? I remember when I used to have all the 12 yoke of oxen. No, he never thought about that. He said, I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. No turning back. The walls behind me and the cross before me. No turning back. No turning back. Whatever happens and whatever does not happen, I am following. I will never go back. You will never go back in Jesus' name. Then the day came when Elijah was, be take, was to be taken to heaven. And Elijah said, Elijah, tarry here. I pray thee, for the Lord has sent me unto Bethel. He said, as your soul live, and as my soul live, I will not leave you until I get that thing I'm looking for. And then he came to Bethel, and then he said, the Lord has sent me to Gilga. I'll not leave you. And they went on together. The Lord has sent me to Jordan. And then he went there, and they crossed Jordan. And then Elijah said, Elisha, ask me what you want before I be taken away from you. And the man did not say, whatever you want to give me, give me. I don't have any request. And just like that, I don't have any backbone. I don't have anything to ask. Whatever it is, I am there. And then they are waving their hands like this. You know, there are some people that come to church and they don't have any intention. They don't have any request and they don't have anything in their heart. They are asking the Lord. Elisha said, I'm not like that. I'm asking you something. I'm asking what another person had never asked you. And I need a double portion of your spirit. And Elijah said, you have asked a hard thing. If you see me when I'm taking off, it shall be so. If you don't see me, it shall not be so. And then he kept on looking at Elijah and the chariots of fire came from heaven and took up Elijah. And then he said, my father, my father, I see you are the chariots of Israel. And the Elijah dropped the mantle and he took that mantle and he then folded it to so mantle, all the mantle of old life and the mantle of old weakness. He removed that and threw that away and he came to Jordan and he said, where is the Lord God of Elijah? And he smote that river and the river parted in two and the people said, the power, the spirit of Elijah has come upon Elisha. It's your turn today. I said it's your turn today. But the Lord is saying, as we're going to receive that, then you are going to believe like Moses, meek and mighty Moses. The meekness and the might of the Lord will come upon your life and then you become like Isaiah, incorruptible Isaiah, interceding Isaiah. You make special, you make your life a life of intercession and a life of incorruptibility. Nothing will corrupt you. Satan will not corrupt you. The world will not corrupt you. And then number three, you become a ransomed, righteous rule. You are ransomed, you are redeemed, you are saved, you are born again. And like Ruth, you live a righteous life because of the ransom of the Lord. Like Abraham, you become approved and appointed. Approved and appointed. The Lord approved of Abraham and he appointed him. And now we say God of Abraham, God of Isaac, and God of Jacob, and God will be your God. Whatever word you utter out of your mouth, you will decree a sin. It shall be established in Jesus' name. And then you become a confident, courageous Caleb. Confident and courageous Caleb, nothing will weaken your need. Nothing will weaken your background. You will say until I'm now 40, until I'm 50, until I'm 60, until I'm 70, until I'm 80, until I'm 85, I'll still be going strong, confident in the Lord, courageous in the Lord. Give me this mountain. No mountain will ever conquer you in Jesus' name. 
Levi is a liberated, loyal Levi. Liberated from sin, liberated from the old trade, liberated from everything he was doing before, but now liberated following after the Lord, and he was loyal and the power of an uh, apostle came upon him uh, and the power of an ambassador will come upon your life and then you feel like elisha exceptional empowered elisha exceptional all those 50 professions of the prophets they said you know the lord is going to take your master away from your head today i know he told your peace he didn't join them he was extraordinary he was exceptional and then the power from on high came upon him empowered now all these people they have come and they have gone but then they left all their mantles behind they said where are you if you are ready to have to be a carrier of miracle if you are ready to be a possessor of signs and wonders is now in your hand if you rise up now and you say unto the lord lord i am here today i am available today everything you have done through them start with me i want to be a special person in the hand of the lord today this is your chance this is your chance stand up now and say lord here am I, here am I, here am I. I believe, I believe, I believe, like Moses believed, I become, I want a coal of fire to touch my mouth, no gossiping again, no backbiting again, no deception again, no lying again. Touch my sin, purify my heart, and let a new thing happen to me. Do not be like rule? Don't follow Opa. Opa has come back and you set your affection and you set your face on the Lord like Ruth set her face on Naomi. And you say, I will not go back. Welcome. Welcome into the kingdom and welcome into the city of the living God. Come, come, come. Tell the Lord, tell the Lord, like Moses, I will be. Like Isaiah, I will be. Like Ruth, I will be. Like Abraham, appointed of the Lord, approved of the Lord. He said, come out, and I come out. And I then go in the direction of the land of promise. The Lord is calling you. And like Caleb, don't allow your backbone to be broken. He says, come. All the others, they wanted to choose a captain. And they wanted to go back to Egypt. They wanted to volunteer to become the slaves of Pharaoh again. But Caleb said no. Joshua said no. I'm following the law. I will never look back. I will never go back. I have decided. I've decided to follow. To follow Jesus. No turning back. No turning back. Like Levi. Like Levi. Like British loyal loving i love the lord nothing will drive me back tell the lord like elisha exceptional extraordinary empowered endowed endued with the spirit of god you decide you determine you dedicate yourself to follow the Lord. The Lord will stand by you. The Lord will be with you. That they were possessors of miracles, power, signs and wonders. You may possess so as well all the days of your life. Your life will never be the same again. In Jesus' name we pray. Give me good global crusade caliber. Amen. The goodness of God be upon you. The grace of God be upon you. The power of the Almighty encircle you. The umbrella of his security be upon every one of you. Your way from today will be clear. 
all the tables on the way, all the stumbling stones on the way, the angel of the Lord clear them out of your sight in Jesus' name. From today, as you have decided, you will be strong. Your backbone will not be broken. Your eyesight will not be deep. Your mind will not be weak. I will see you with on the side of Moses, yes. on the side of Isaiah, yes. on the side of Ruth, yes. on the side of Abraham, yes. on the side of Caleb, yes. walking along with Levi. Yes. And when there is time to manifest power, I will say the power upon your life, like upon Elisha in Jesus' name. If you are the person I'm talking about, raise up your hand. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for the call you have given us today. And I pray for those who are repenting, responding to the call to repentance. Oh Lord, receive them in Jesus' name. Your salvation for everyone. Your sanctification for everyone. I will pray, oh Lord, you make everyone soundly safe and strong in Jesus' name. I pray as you have appointed them today to be your children, approve of them. I pray that the approval of heaven will never live their lives in Jesus' name. As you have liberated them, that liberation of a permanent in Jesus' name. And the power to go and live loyal, a loyal life, a faithful life unto the Lord, even to every one of them in Jesus' name. I pray that spirit of the conqueror, that spirit of power, that spirit, that spirit of the overcomer will come upon everyone in Jesus' name. Sickness under your feet, affliction under your feet, demon possession under your feet weakness under your feet become extraordinary become exceptional become empowered like elisha in jesus name go in the strength of the lord go in the might of the lord and I pray that everything we've heard today will be embedded and planted in your heart and life. And then you'll give expression to your faith and you'll give action to your faith. And nothing will ever conquer you again in Jesus' name. The joy of the Lord. Let's just keep thanking the Lord. Let's bless them of the Lord. Because the Lord has, you know, reached out unto us. The Lord has met all our needs. You know. Let's bless them of the Lord. Let's show the Lord our gratitude, what he has done for us. The Lord has met all our needs. The Lord has blessed us. Thank the Lord for what he has done for you. Even though the problem may not have been called out, but you have been touched. No doubt the spirit of the Lord has reached out unto every one of us. 
So you need to begin to check yourself because we know that the Lord has reached out unto us. In the mighty name of Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Father, we thank you. We know we cannot thank you enough for what you have done for us. For how, Lord, you have met with all our needs today. Special grace you've granted unto us. Lord, and you showed us how you met, Lord, with the great men of old, Moses, Lord, Caleb, Ruth, Abraham, and Lord, that if we remember all these people, the miracles they experienced in their lives, that we too will experience them. And we're beginning to see them in our lives in Jesus' name. Amen. Father, we thank you because all that we are hoping, all we are expecting, oh Lord, from you, we know they are beginning to manifest already. And Lord, this is the beginning of the great things you promised to do in our lives this year. Those of us who are thinking, but it hasn't come to me yet. Lord, we are waiting. It will come in Jesus' name. As the servant of the Lord, our Father in the Lord, Lord, as he has pronounced it, we claim those blessings upon our lives in Jesus' name. Those of us trusting us on behalf of our sons, on behalf of our daughters, Lord, on behalf of our wives, on behalf of our husbands, even on behalf of ourselves. Things, Lord, we think, Lord, when are you going to do it? It looks almost impossible. But your word have told us that with you, oh God, nothing shall be impossible. So, Father, we see, we claim the manifestation. And, Lord, we know you do it speedily, too, in the name of Jesus. Amen. As we go from here, Lord, this day, we pray you go with us. And the program, Lord, as it's beginning this afternoon, Lord, we'll not be tired because we're going to be connected with this program also. We bless your name because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Praise the Lord. Okay, let's just be seated for a minute. We thank God for how far he has brought us, you know, in the program. Um... You can see that the, the Wi-Fi was just buffing. So just to save us time, because the program, you know, the global uh, crusade, world global crusade program is starting again at three o'clock. So we want you to get home as quickly as possible, you know, fill the tummy and uh, get yourself ready. Three o'clock, you're not going to miss it, I'm sure. Praise the Lord. Who said yeah? Yes. Oh, yes, you're not going to miss it. Praise the Lord. <laughs> okay, we have an announcement. Yeah. Okay, we just listen to the announcement and then we share with you. Praise the Lord. Just a few announcements. Uh, youth program is when? Coming weekend. So we should not forget the youth program that is coming up on Saturday. And we know that they are blessed already and they'll be blessed the more in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. I believe everybody should have registered by now, but if there is anyone that has not registered, please follow the protocol and register and be there for the blessings in Jesus' name. For those at home, please do the poll. Those at home, please do the poll as usual. And also for those of us that are here, Please, we need to, oh, do I need to welcome you first and then say goodbye? Tottenham, you're welcome. God bless us in Jesus' name. Please, we need to clean the church before we go. And lastly, things are provided for those of us that are here in the church today at the back. And please, I've been asked that we take one item each. One item each. Each and I want to say the usher, uh, Sister Stella, please be in charge. So just just one moment. Praise the Lord. Um, for Tottenham brethren, just I'll be quick. Um, we were waiting. If you noticed, the announcement of Tottenham coming here today was a bit delayed. That was why we did We're not told until about Thursday or Friday, I think. So we were waiting for uh, St. Anne's Church Primary School to get back to us. And they didn't come back to us until, I think, Friday. Yeah, they came back to us on Friday. And uh, they said that uh, they were, the school was closing 2, 2 p.m. 
So they said there's a construction work. They were to say there's changing windows of the building, and they don't they wouldn't want people on site while the windows are being uh, replaced. So they're saying that uh, guaranteed end of August when the schools will be coming back. So God has answered our prayers. So start getting ready. <laughs> End of August, we'll be going back to Tottenham. Thank you. Praise the Lord. Uh, I stood here and I said it. Many people said it as well. And it has come to pass. We praise the name of the Lord. Glory be to the name of the Lord. Sir, we like this place, but we love, we love our place. We like coming here when everybody is coming here. We love going to our place. Praise the Lord. So please, Sister Stella, and maybe one of the ushers can join her as well. Look after the things there. Shall we rise up to share the grace, please? The grace. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. The love of God. And the fellowship of the Holy Spirit. Be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives. And we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Good afternoon. God bless you. Please, this afternoon's program for the global thing, we are not coming here. We are logging on with the new national, international something. I know the passcode as 195131. And please, we need to put the names of the country and everything correctly. When we finish, we can go back to A, adults, brothers, PA, and all of this. Please let us clean the church before we go.